Okay, after months of waiting for it to get here, it finally showed up. Bet you're wondering what this is? We're gonna find out. All of the original video that I shot <laughs> testing this device is lost. So I had to start all over. This is the HDTS 7-in-1 Survival Tool Emergency Stick. So the HDTS Emergency Stick. Strong flashlight, 300 lumens. It has a phone charger with a USB-A interface. It has water purification capability, a cartridge. We're going to look at that. An SOS signaler that's automatic. A hand warmer, which is pretty, pretty handy. An arc lighter for lighting things. And uh, a braking hammer. Well, it's for breaking windshields. And it's also water resistant up to five feet and durable enough for rigorous outdoor activities. All right, let's get to testing. Cha-cha. All right, so the only way to test the flashlight is to take it out in the dark. Uh, the flashlight that's on me right now is the J5 Tactical, which is a 300 lumen light. And let me switch the camera around. Okay, so as you can see, it's completely dark. And uh, this is the J5 Tactical that I'm fired up. This is on wide beam right now. There's actually a tree like right over here that you can see. All right, and there's, there's actually three more trees exactly like it, but then you can also use the zoom feature like that. And this is the J5 Tactical. You can see it all the way down there. There's one tree, there's two trees, and there's three trees. I'm not sure if you can see those or not. So just to give you an idea, we can see the second tree, but the third tree and the fourth tree are really hard to see. So now let's go ahead and fire up the, I need the light. Uh, you can't really see the, the button for the flashlight. Maybe they need to put an indent on it or something. There's the button for the light right there. So. It's going to fire up the light and um, yeah this is a uh, I think that for 300 lumens this thing is much better than the other 300 lumen. I think this thing's putting out way more light than the 300 lumen J5 tactical does uh, the other thing too is now I'm going to focus it I'm going to push it out actually that was there you go that's wide beam it's pretty good it's not bad it's rated for 300 yards uh, is that reasonable? Uh, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Let's go ahead and zoom it out. Come on now. There we go. I'm going to zoom it all the way out. I mean, it's not bad. 300 yards the situation will dictate. Uh, I can see trees in the, in the very background. I'm not sure what you're picking up. There's an old uh, um, outhouse out there. As you can see, we're starting to get a little bit more, specifically that one tree that we were looking for. You can clearly see it, no problem. Second tree, third tree, fourth tree. So it uh, it does put out more than uh, the rated 300 lumens. I think they were just playing it safe with that. Uh, but just to give you an idea, I don't know what exactly you guys can see here. There's a tree line over there, got some bushes. So overall, I would I would give this, I would rate this flashlight for 300 lumens Pretty, pretty damn good. I'm going to zoom that out real quick. And you should be able to see more now that I'm pushing it through the tree line. I'm trying to keep it in the center of the screen for you guys. There's a building right there. You can watch. There you go. All right, so 300 lumens, good flashlight. All right, she's plugged in and uh, charging. We'll see how long it takes to charge her and how long it lasts. All right, so now the light is solid red, so I guess that means it's charged. It has been 2.15, uh, I would say it's been about an hour, hour and a half tops. Uh, and, but that doesn't mean anything, that's just from the initial charge. We'll burn this down and see what happens. For the purposes of this test, what I did was I took my handy dandy Galaxy S8, this is just a regular S8. It's all beat up. This is what I make a lot of my videos on. Don't don't mind that little thing there. It's not a big deal. And I burned it down to zero until it died. And now I'm going to fire it up. And hopefully we'll be able to keep it on long enough. While that's happening, I've already disassembled or taken the bottom part off of this. You can see that the battery is a little light. It's fully charged. And then all we're going to do is we're just going to swap out the exact cord that is holding this thing together. Ah, come here, cord. And then we're going to see how long it takes to actually charge this phone. 
As you can see, the phone actually says that it's on 0%. We're going to plug, that's the wrong end. We're gonna plug it into the phone. Oh, don't die, phone. Don't die, don't do it. Yeah, she died, hold on. I'm gonna turn it back on. Come on, phone, you can do it. This phone is truly dead. Oh, wait, something's happening. Is it coming back on? Come on, phone. All right, we're gonna fire that up. And then we're going to plug it in. I don't think I have to push power bank. I'm going to push the power bank button once the phone comes on. I'm going to just push it now, and you can see the little red light is on. We're going to plug it in, and we're going to, okay, whatever. We, or you're, you've already seen 0%, so let's see what happens when I plug, ah, pl plug it in to the bottom. There it is. And now she should be charging. Let's see here. What is, um, is the power bank, is the light? power bank it's not on power bank I'm gonna hold it down and it looks like it just started and now we're gonna see how long it don't die on me phone it's so dead that it may not actually do yeah the power light that I pushed is blinking I don't know if you can see it or not but it is blinking and it's now as you can see the phone is actually charging right now so we're just gonna we're just going to leave it off and see it's two hours and 26 minutes until fully charged based off of this battery. I'm going to throw some stats up on the uh, screen showing you what this battery output is supposed to be in milliamps and this battery output is or this. I'm going to put up some data on the battery, this size battery and this size battery. As you can see, she's already moved up to 1%. And so we're just going to do, I don't think we'll do any time lapse, but I'll just kind of like do one of these things. Okay, so we're at 100% and it's right at two hours. This has a 300 or 3000 milliamp battery inside of it. This has a 5000 milliamp battery inside of it. Some issues that I discovered, which we will talk about at the conclusion. Overall, it did the job. So this thing has a water filtration unit. The, the company really hasn't told me uh, anything about it uh, other than it's a water filtration unit used for emergency purposes. I am not going to try and suck any water through it because I would like to maintain the integrity of it. Now what you can actually do is just take this end, stick it in water, stick that end in your mouth and suck it out. A lot of people won't do that. I've got to push this. It actually it fits very tightly inside of here. And here's the actual water filter. Um, it looks like it's got, uh, basically it's a silicone seal. Uh, it looks like it's, uh, oh, this is a good kind of water filter. I like that. Okay. So once again, for, just for the integrity, it's also winter time right now, and I don't want this to freeze. If you know anything about this type of filter, uh, I'll put something like over there or something, uh, about this type of water filter. And, um, if you, you, once you start to use it, if you get, if water will be inside of it. If it freezes, it will break all of these little fibers and thus it will not filtrate the bacteria, protozoa, things like that. So I'm going to go and give this a solid pass, even though I'm not using it because I know exactly what it is. I can actually see the fibers through the plastic. So I know exactly what kind of filter this is. As you can see, when it's lit up, well, let's see if I can get you guys to see it. There we go. You actually have, whenever you push any one of these buttons, for instance, the flashlight is on right now. For any time you push one of these buttons, all the buttons will pulse illumination. So we're going to go and use the SOS feature, and I want you guys to see that. I've got my thumb over the button, now we're going to point it out. And we're going to just turn that SOS feature on, and you can see... And the girlfriend unders more, understands Morse code, and obviously it's dash, dot, 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 dash, dot, dot, something like that. Uh, but this does, is, this is push of the button, and it works, no problem. And this is the SOS button focused. So you could actually pretty, pretty, you could probably get some pretty good distance out of this. Just by pushing that, and then obviously we'll turn the light back on. All right, and then we'll turn the light off. And then... The, uh, even though nothing's on, the lights are still lit up for a short period of time. Overall, SOS feature, good to go. 
So now we're going to test the hand warmer, and uh, there's no real way to test it, but let's just see what happens. You know, we're going to find the hand warmer button. Here it is. We're going to click it one time. As usual, it looks like, well, that's different. All the lights are not blinking. Oh, there they go. Wait. There we go. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we're going to take our hands down here, put it on the plastic portion, and just kind of hold it there for a little bit, see if we can feel the temperature going up. It is different because... Normally the lights will stay on. Hold on, I gotta check something. And apparently the instructions are really that good. So press warmer for two seconds to start. I only clicked it one time. So we're gonna go back up to the warmer button. We're gonna hold it for two seconds. Remember it turned green before, one, two. And see now things are pulsing like they normally do. And then let's go ahead and get our hands down in this section, this rubberized section right here. Oop, almost dropped things. There we go. And uh, let's see if we're noticing any temperature differences that are that are drastic. We may have to do a time lapse on this. I'd say it's just it's just as big as my palm, which I would say was probably the perfect uh, the perfect size. All right, let's go ahead and uh, do a time lapse on this. Okay, so the hand warmer is uh, working. It's working very well, actually. Um, we'll talk more about it during the conclusion, uh, but uh, I'd say overall, uh, function achieved. Uh, I'm going to keep this on and see how long it lasts. I'll probably post some uh, some numbers someplace in here. Come on, camera, focus. Focus, camera. There you go. I'll put some numbers in here and see how long this thing actually runs for. But uh, overall, uh, hand warmer works. Works good. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using my Hoo-Hoo camping stove. This is an awesome little stove. Comes in this little pack right here. I will, uh, it's, it's, it's got pretty much everything inside of it. Uh, I'll leave a link below if you guys are interested in it. This is a great little stove. This is my second one. This one's brand new. So what we'll do is we'll try to use the actual igniter. This is the actual igniter down here. Let me take this off right here. All right, and there's our igniter right there. If we uh, apply this and use the button, it should light things on fire. It's basically a little lighter. Let's give it a shot. Also, the instructions. Unscrew to use lighter, power bank, and water filtration. And obviously, righty tighty, lefty loosey. I've grabbed a few miscellaneous items just to give it a, give it a try and see what happens. Uh, let's see, we've got some... Got some pine needles. It's been pretty wet lately, so we'll see what happens. Let's uh, where was the lighter lighter button? And uh, we'll see. Let's see what happens. Let's bundle this up a little bit better. At least uh, there's a drop test. Just rolled off the table. Let's see what happens. It is working. Okay. I hear it crackling. We do have smoke. So it looks like it needs something a little bit more combustible. So we'll take it off a notch. Let's use some let's use some dried leaves. Oh yeah. And honestly it has been a little wet. But it is creating that arc that you need to get something going. So we're gonna we're gonna take it up a notch. Also notice that it times out. So let's go with one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand. Okay, so five seconds. It'll stay on for five seconds, which is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Let's uh, let's do something a little bit more modern, and let's just go ahead and use some. This is typical junk mail paper. Uh, let's at least give it a fighting chance. Lighter, lighter. Let's at least give it a fighting chance. I have to do this twice. Now, in all honesty, 
this thing really doesn't seem to be designed to give a, to actually like make an ember if that's what you're after. Here's what I can tell you. It is working. This thing is on fire. You should be able to see that. So it does do the job and you can make things on fire. There's a little flame down there. We'll probably time lapse this. Let's see if there's some other things we can do with it, like maybe light a candle. I think it's lit. Okay. So I can light a candle, which is super awesome, for candle's sake anyway. And then a smart person would use that candle to accelerate the lighting of their fire. So that's something that you can do. I think the real applicability for this lighter is to use it in emergency situations only to ignite other sources. Uh, maybe a fire starter, something quick, a candle, things that are designed to be lit easily. It's not really going to start your fire. I'm also noticing just the use of it. There's a little bit of damage on the plastic right here so that could be me it could be anything but I mean even if I hit the lighter you can see it, it's still working it's continuing to work I don't think it's anything that's detrimental overall the lighter I'm gonna give it a pass so the next thing I'm gonna look at is the actual glass breaker uh, what's it say here um, ejected glass hammer Warning, do not use on human body. Gee, I will try not to. I couldn't find anybody with it let me break their the glass on their car, so I'm going to try it on this. Uh, this is tin. Uh, actually, no, this is aluminum. No, it's not. It's rusting, so it's tin. Okay, so if you look on the end, basically this is pressure, pressure activated. What I'm looking for, to see is if, one, what it'll do to the, to the metal, and two, uh, if it resets, because if it doesn't reset, it's kind of useless. Here we go. Hit it pretty hard. Okay, it is resetting. I can see where it's putting these little dents in it, but remember, it's designed to shatter glass, not punch holes in things. I'm sure it would not be very nice. Okay. Can see where it's putting little holes in things. It feels as if it was wor would work, but there's literally no way to truly test it. Uh, I would look for some video. I will go see if I can find some videos. So the good, the bad, and the ugly. Overall, nine out of a ten. Uh, nothing's perfect. It is a solid product. I do like the flashlight. I do like the battery capability that's within inside of it. The hand warmer was very nice. The glass breaker, I couldn't truly evaluate, but I believe that it's good enough to, to, to create that center punch effect on glass that will make it shatter. I don't think it's designed to like puncture the glass. It's designed to shatter the glass. So I believe it will work. Things I really liked about it. I really liked about the, the instructions. You literally, on every layer... There is a set of instructions in the Marine Corps or in the military. We call it a dummy card. I really do like it. I like the flashlight. I like the ability that you, to to uh, to actually to focus the lens. Uh, you can actually see the lens focus coming in and out, uh, and you can do it on both sides. And it actually has instructions on it for far and near. It did outperform my my favorite flashlight, and they're both rated at 300 lumens. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's overperforming. Uh, I do like how all of the, the lights light up when I go to use it. Like if I turn the flashlight on, all of these things will start to blink. I don't know if you can see that or not. We're going to turn the flashlight off. Uh, I do like the SOS. It's automatic. You just push one button 
and that's it. Look, my no hands, and it does SOS all by itself. Click, it's off. The power bank was very interesting. Uh, I was able to gather some information for you. Hopefully you read that. If not, go back, go back to the power bank. It's nice to have that power bank. What I, what I like about the power bank was, is it's standard. Let me unroll this for you real quick here. Uh, it's standard. So you can literally, it's, it uses the USB-C, the little one, and then you can do an output on your USB, uh, what is that, A's. And uh, it's standard. So what does that mean? You can use the same USB that you use to power your, your cell phone and your car to charge this puppy up. Things I did not like about it. I did not like the buttons. I, I like how the buttons light up. I like their placement. I love how you can find them easily. What I don't like is that there should be a little detent right on the flashlight or on the, the light. There should be some kind of detent, some way to identify it. You can't see these things in the dark until you start pushing buttons. Now, it's not a huge issue. You know, I can push any one of these buttons and something's going to happen. Then you'd be like, okay, there's the light. I can turn that off and turn that on. But that's, that, that is really about it. Uh, overall... I would say it's just under a pound. I, I mean, I didn't even look at the stats. It just feels like it's about a pound tops. Would it fit in your pack? Yeah, it would. Just slip it right down your pack. I di could not feel any give in the, and this is good, I couldn't feel any give in the threads like trying to bend it. Uh, so you, it's. I don't think it's going to snap even though it is larger than most would like. I do like the battery power rating on this thing too. Uh, so it means it also means it's going to take a little bit longer than normal to recharge it, but it's also going to put out much more. And you should have seen the stats when I did the battery uh, portion of it. Overall, 9 out of 10. This thing is going inside my girlfriend's car. I'm going to put it right down underneath the side of the seat, and if she needs something, she's got it. I'll leave a link below in case you're interested, and I think that's about it for this device. I want to thank High Desert Training System Services, HDTS, for sending this to me for an, uh, an honest and fair eval because I hadn't seen one yet. And um, I think that's going to be about it. If you want to support the channel, there's a link below. Check it out. Until the next time, stay safe, have a great day, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.